Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. As you can see, I've got all the gear out tonight on this lovely crisp clear night. It is a bit windy, so rather than doing the long exposure kind of thing, which I don't think would really work tonight, I'm instead just going to aim to have a little bit of fun and do some live stacking and EAA, that type of thing. Well, I'll be totally honest with you, I'm going into tonight with basically no plan whatsoever. I'm just going to go and pick a bunch of targets, I think, and put a little bit of time onto each one doing some live stacking like I mentioned. Um, I'll probably be using very short exposures tonight and uh, we'll just see what we get. And the main aim for tonight is to just show you some EAA and have some fun. Okay, so before I could get anything else going tonight, the first thing I'm gonna to need to do, as usual, is polar alignment. So I've just opened up Sharp Cap on the screen there. I'm trying to record the laptop screen with a DSLR. I hope this is working out fine for you and you can see what I'm doing, but I thought I'd just run through it live and take you through the process. So. Uh, I'm just going to dismiss this tip and connect to a camera first. Whoops, cameras and the 2600. This should immediately begin looping and if I can see stars on the screen then the plate solving algorithm should work and uh, I'll hopefully be able to get polar aligned in just a moment. So I don't want it tracking, I do want it unparked though a moment. And uh, I think I'll go back to, well, basically a full uh, field of view from the camera that's still cropped slightly there we go oh, I must say it's freezing tonight um, right that looks quite good I can see stars on the screen two second exposures uh, I like it I'd like it to ideally be a bit shorter than that as it'll make a any changes I make to polar alignment a bit more responsive but that looks good now so uh, I want to go to tools and polar align so it's going to tell me what I need to do polar alignment introduction basically give you the prerequisites if I just hit next it's going to capture this first image so I'm making a special effort to not put any of my weight on these flagstones that uh, the scopes on otherwise its calculation will be thrown off so uh, press next now so it's got your soft plate solved to begin with and now I'm basically going to have to just unlock the RA axis, turn the scope a little bit. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, I could do a made lamp on so I can see. <laughs> All right. Wow, that's a stiff clutch. All right. So the RA is now unlocked most of the way. It's still just locked slightly, so it's a little bit stiff and won't kind of sag due to any imbalance all right so it's got uh, that plate solved the polar alignment error is one degree 47 arc minutes 52 arc seconds poor i would agree um now it needs me to move it left so if i take the back two legs of the tripod kind of pick them up ever so slightly pivoting on the front leg the north leg move those over to the right that's going to turn the whole scope left <laughs> So uh, needs to go left above a degree, so I'll make a decent movement. Whew, I won't be able to stay here too long tonight in this clothing, it's uh, <laughs> dead cold. Alright, so it needs to go 50 more arc minutes. Maybe too much. Nope, still needs to move left. Uh, nine arc minutes, 36 arc seconds. So uh, I'm just going to try and move it on this. That was right. Now I'm using the uh, azimuth bolts and I'll do the altitude in a moment if you like. So uh, now it needs to go to the right. I overcorrected left basically. You can end up chasing your tail if you're too drastic with these uh, adjustments right a little more and a little more needs to go considerably down so I'll do that now up a long way I've, I've massively over adjusted because I'm rushing because it's cold <laughs> further right And a little more. 
I think we're closing in on it now, we're nearly there. And a little more, and I'll go up a touch. Sorry if this is boring to watch, I just thought I'd run through it and basically show you how it goes when you're kind of used to this process. It still takes a few minutes, but uh, it's definitely not something you can skip, uh, I wouldn't say anyway. Maybe if you're just doing visual observation, it wouldn't really matter if you had that bit of drift, but uh, if you're gonna be doing even EAA or astrophotography especially, you're gonna want a good polar alignment and that's, it's saying it's good, that's good enough for me. I can try maybe just tiniest little tweak towards the right. Yeah, that's moved it to excellent. Maybe I can do a little more. I'm not even taking my own advice here about chasing your tail. <laughs> yeah, that's fine now. Right, I'll lock this off. That's all fine. And uh, now that's finished, I'm just gonna go ahead and close the polar alignment tool. Undo this clutch again. And straighten the scope once more. So I'll just go get this lined back up visually by looking down the counterweight bar and the north leg of the tripod. That usually sets things pretty decently to a home position again. And I think the next thing we can do is just pick a target and make a start. All right, so I've just taken a moment to have a little look around just visually in the sky and find something I wanna shoot. I'm not even using a planetarium for this right now. Um, indeed in a good place right now is Orion. The whole constellation's clear for me and I can start shooting something in it. I think I'd like to see how the flame nebula popped up basically so that's what I'm going to select. I'm going to go to that now. Uh, I have already taken a flat frame for this uh, just using Sharpcap's automatic flats tool and uh, that's ready to go and I'll be subtracting basically flats and bias on the fly and uh, we'll just see how it goes from here. So I'm going to head over to the PC now. We'll pick back up. We'll select this target go to a plate solve and get hopefully it's live stack underway. All right, so I'm just sat down next to the laptop now. Uh, I'm hopefully just gonna take you through this as I do it live. And uh, as I said, at least it's just raw warts and all, and you can see kind of what to expect on a basic evening of EAA. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Cart Do CL. That's my uh, planetarium software. That's gonna speak directly to sharp cap uh, and I can use it for plate solving then as well. So the first thing I need to do in here is connect telescope. I've already got this all set up so I can just hit connect and hopefully it should begin talking to it. Um, now I know the star that I want right next to the flame nebula is called Almitak. So I'll just search for that a second rather than panning around and trying to find it. And indeed the first thing I want to do now is slew to it. While that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead now and open up PhD, also PhD guiding. Um, it is really windy tonight, so I'm not expecting, uh, <laughs> certainly not expecting any miracles from auto guiding, but I think I'll run it regardless. And uh, if nothing else, it should stop um, the object drifting over time too much. If my polar alignment wasn't perfect, you know, if Sharp got was wrong, I don't think it is. But still, it's just good practice, so uh, why not do it? Uh, now I know that my guide scope and main scope are pretty well co-aligned uh, so I can't see Alnithak in the guide scope feed so it's very likely I'm going to have to uh, plate solve by hitting this little button down here in sharp cap. I've got that set up with uh, Astap is the plate solver I use and I think it's H19 database that you download along with it. That's basically a huge catalogue of images. Uh, that it can reference against and say, hey, this isn't where you pointed. Yeah, you actually want to be over here and uh, make these corrections like it's going to do right now. So it's just pulling Alnithak into the field of view. There's another reason I've decided to center on this to begin with as well, and that's because I want to make sure I'm in perfect focus before I get started. It already looks good because uh, there's always a signaler with uh, a Newtonian telescope, and that's the diffraction spikes. If they're splitting, so if I deliberately move this out of focus a moment to try and demonstrate what I'm talking about. You should see the, uh, the start to become kind of split. Have I set guy? Uh, no, I haven't got. It's ideal tracking, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, you can see hopefully on the screen the, the diffraction spikes are starting to split. Uh, that's a good indicator that you're heading out of focus now. I know I'm going to have to move it inwards now because I made a few outwards movements. So I'm just going to put this on the end of the scope. Ah. 
Oh man, is it cold. Right. And I'm going to move in now. So I'll make a course movement. Perhaps even one more. I do have uh, some backlash compensation enabled on this as well. Uh, so at least these movements aren't just taking up backlash and doing really nothing for me. One more. Another. It's worth noting as well, uh, SharpCap does have a Batinov kind of grabber tool. I may as well show you that in fact as well. Uh, Batinov mask. If you just click that, it's going to kind of pick up this pattern from the Batinov mask, this diffraction pattern, and tell me how close to uh, perfect focus I am. So, as you can see, the red line is ever so slightly away from being perfectly like intersecting those two other crosses, which is what you want to aim for. Um, there is some, like, I think there's some margin for error with this tool, and I, usually I like to just do it visually. I'll try one more inwards movement. Uh, how's this looking? So, I don't know if you can probably tell on the screen, but, um, that red line, which is supposed to be perfectly bisecting those other two blue and green lines, uh, is kind of mostly spending its time in the center. As I said, I, I usually prefer to just do it visually because it's really not that hard to guess, I don't think. Um, probably need a bit of a shorter exposure, make things a little bit more plain to see. Hopefully you can see there uh, that pattern that was kind of blown out in the center is now actually visible and uh, it is dithering around a little bit as to be expected with the, the scene conditions but I'm willing to call that focused I would say so uh, I think that's more than good enough I'll take the Binov mask off the end oh all right put that there a moment now we know our only tack was right next to uh, the target that we wanted, so I'm just going to make sure that this is synchronized. Yep. Uh, NGC 2024. So I'll just hit slew, and the mount should move that little bit towards it and start putting it in the middle of the frame. So if I just bump up the gain a real long way we may be able to see this kind of live on screen I hope and it looks like there it is yeah there is the flame you know looking at this I wonder if I could get um, the horse head in too that might be possible uh, gotta be worth a try hasn't it so uh, there's also another little reflection uh, nebula that's in the horse head and flame um, Okay, I think I've just moved this manually now. Slight change of plans rather than just relying solely on plate solving. <laughs> so if I move this manually down in the frame, that's Alnitak right there, as we can see. And he's north the right direction. Nope, I need to go south. Because I want to move the flame over to the left. Because I know that the horse head should be about here. Even if I can't see it in these individual frames, it should be, should be there. Uh, can I see anything yet? It's possible. It's nearly there. Uh, I think the best thing to do now, just double kind of double check uh, alignment before I start this live stack off is uh, if I just actually pre live stack a couple of frames uh, I should be able to stretch that image and see you can also do a display stretch on sharp cap if you just kind of hit uh, auto stretch there if it's not already making things visible for you but I like to keep that off it's already got my flat selected that's fine so uh, at least you should be ideally minimal vignetting on this image now if we just start the livestock like I was talking about 
reset the settings a moment. My word, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really cold. Four with half maxes are too high. All right, just for a moment, I'll turn off filtering by uh, four with half max and let it just stack a couple and uh, hopefully get a quick idea of where we're framed. <sighs> Alright, so I'm just stretching the uh, black point and midpoint of the histogram. I'm going to automatically. Uh, <laughs> there we go, I can see the uh, acid now. That was just automatic colour kind of alignment. So it looks like if I want to get both of these in frame properly, I could do it moving oh, all Nitak slightly left. Hello, Ron. That's my granddad who lives next door. <laughs> just saying hello there. Um, right then, so that's the plan. Move Alnitak slightly left in the frame. And I think I'll have a decent image of both. So the reason I'm not using Sharpcap's own kind of ASCOM mount control is because when you use those that little pad there, it always sets the uh, tracking rate of the, uh, the mount to a custom rate and it makes it really, well, I find nearly impossible to auto guide afterwards. You always have to go back to this window and reselect side aerial tracking. So, if you just do it this way, you can kind of avoid all that straight away. I think it was a south movement it needed. Yeah. Uh, that's that's probably good enough. It's worth noting it's usually good practice to take all the lash out of your gears with a north and an east movement as well. Not that really the Eco 8 needs too much of that kind of treatment, but still, why not do it? Alright, so uh, I think we're just about ready to go. Uh, the cooling is on, I've told it to target zero degrees, and it's with the cooler off, it's running at minus half a degree. So. <laughs> It's, uh, it's definitely pretty chilly. I think for tonight, I'm gonna to be using 450 gain, maybe two second exposures, something like that. And we'll just take a quick look and see what we start to uh, see. What we start to see. So I'll begin the live stack now. I'll clear the old one away. And I think, if you just give this a moment to settle, I probably judge these at uh, full width half max as well. So uh, if I tell it to filter them, it should get rid of any very large wind gusts above six and a half. Uh, full width half max. Brightness looks set to be pretty good. So basically that's measuring star brightness per frame. And if it drops off due to passing clouds, things like that, or even gusts, which also drop the brightness of a star, then uh, it'll reject those frames too. So you should only be stacking basically mostly good data. Uh, it's quite useful to have these filters turned on, I think. Um, if I just kind of take a hold of this and see where we're at. And recall of balance. <laughs> We've lost connection. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go get some food because I've gone on and on at this point and uh, I'll basically check on it soon and we'll go back and uh, take a little look. Or is it going to connect right now? Yeah, yeah, it's done. <laughs> you can't plan this. Yeah. All right, there we go. So, all said, flame. I can't remember the name of the little reflection nebula, but that looks promising. I'm going to let it stack for a while. So, uh, I'll catch up with you in a little bit, and I'm going to go select another target as well for after this. All right, guys, so I'm back out. That horse head and flame stack has finished now. Unfortunately, it actually got drawn to a slightly shorter end than I had hoped. I had a bit of a crash with sharp cap when I wasn't paying attention, and I think I lost a little bit of time. What I like to do generally when I'm live stacking like this is periodically manually save out as a 16-bit TIFF, and then I know that if it does have a crash or something like that, I haven't lost too much data. I think I lost a few hundred seconds. Uh, I got the file open here a moment ago. Um, it looks, yeah, the last save I made was at 1,244 frames 
stacked there were two two second frames it was looking good and i'll show you that on screen in uh, just a moment for you guys to see but i think i've got another target picked out now um i want to take a look at the eskimo nebula and so i've gone to a nearby star i've already undergone the uh, focusing routine that i needed to do and now i can just kind of go ahead and just up this exposure i guess it's worth mentioning at this point why i'm up in the exposure before uh, moving it's because i'm going to use plate solving to make sure this target is centered and uh, ngc 2392 there we go so i'm just going to tell the mount to go to using car do cl here it's going to do that and it'll probably get it close to centered uh, and indeed it looks like it has really done quite a good job in fact it is centered but just for the sake of it uh, i will show you just a, a plate solve anyway and it should at least report back to the um, planetarian software that it is in the right position i hope so yeah plate solve succeeded offset of less than 0 0.005 degrees no synchronization needed so it's looked at where uh, it's placed itself it's decided this is more than accurate enough no uh, no adjustment is necessary so it's quite smart about how it does things um, it's got obviously a tolerance so if it was kind of over here on the screen or something it'd say yeah it, it's significantly off and we need to uh, kind of adjust now I think for this target I'm probably going to use uh, a little bit of a region of interest so maybe 19 20 by 10 80 and get that effect of it being slightly longer focal length even though it makes absolutely no difference <laughs> really to the uh, the sampling let's just take a quick look at this on the screen whoops i was already more zoomed in than i thought so uh, 100 percent so these two second shots i can really see the eskimo there i'll just get rid of this uh, reticle yeah hopefully you can see there on the screen that's the eskimo and uh, it's looking pretty promising already i think this is going to live stack up fairly well uh maybe a shy uh, a slightly shorter exposure that's a tongue twister and back to 450 gain perhaps no that looks a little bit too a little bit too poor now i think so uh, you know what i think we'll go two second exposures 450 gain sorry about the uh, <laughs> me running rubbing my nose and sniffling and things like that it's just it's properly freezing out here right now hence the big silly coat it might look silly but at least it's very warm um all right i think we're going to go ahead with that um another thing that i honestly just totally forgot to do when i set off the horse head and flame stack until about 10 minutes in is i forgot to set off auto guiding and uh, there was a very small amount of natural drift it was extremely small so uh, i guess the polar alignment was accurate but all the same it was there and uh, auto guiding would have kept it at bay and i am using dithering as well i think every 90 seconds so that's 45 frames at this um length of exposure it's going to perform a small dither and that should just help some of that fixed pattern noise from the sensor stop from stacking up quite so much and uh, becoming kind of a correlated noise sometimes you see like a raining pattern appearing and this should help to kind of smear all that make it random and uh, hopefully lead to a better signal to noise ratio on the uh, final image so i'll hit live stack now just clear this and make a fresh uh, fresh start reset everything okay take another look at the uh, full width half max settings i want to be kind of rejecting rejecting some bad frames i noticed that when i was stacking the horse head and flame uh it was getting rid of about 40 percent of the frames that came in and i think that's just because it's so gusty tonight but that looks pretty good already uh i'll go ahead and color balance it and apply a small histogram stretch just to see what we can make out uh yeah that's working pretty well i think uh now that I've got these parameters dialed in a little bit more, it looks like if I set a, uh, a full width half max filter of about 5.2, this might seem extremely high, but um, the full width half max is reporting 
is going to be error filled due to some stars in the image being saturated. Um, you should, really shouldn't use saturated stars to figure out a full width half max. So it's probably likely lower than this even on a windy night like tonight. So uh, now I've dialed that in a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead, clear the live stack and uh, let it just kind of go again. Uh, a lot of these are fairly low. So if I go a 5.1, that's slightly more discriminatory and should get rid of even more of those bad frames. <sighs> Looks like we've got a decent chance of uh, seeing this planetary nebula quite well. And uh, I think it's time I went back inside and warmed up and uh, <laughs> picked out another target for slightly later on. I'll let this run until it's just about to kind of transit the meridian uh, line, which should probably be about a half an hour from now, maybe, uh, maybe slightly less. And then I think we'll move to another target. It looks like uh, Ursa Major is pretty well placed. So uh, maybe M108 and the, the Owl Nebula, that might be a target. Or perhaps one of the classics like M51, M63, that kind of thing. I'll have to just uh, weigh my options up and uh, come back out with a plan. I have to say, for 32 seconds, that's looking pretty promising already, I would say. Before I kind of head in. What is this taking to stack? Yeah, 229 milliseconds to uh, to stack. These ones are slightly shorter as it comes in, so um, you can get a very fast stacking performance even out of a relatively low performance PC uh, when you use a region of interest crop. I think it was taking about two seconds-ish, or maybe just shy, to, uh, to stack those other ones on the horse head and flame, which was lucky because that's about the speed the frames were coming in, of course. So. Uh, Right, anyway, I've rambled on. I'm gonna head off inside now and I'll catch up with you in a little bit of a while. So the scope's just transited the Meridian line now. It's been shooting the Eskimo for a bit longer than I expected, really. Probably the best part of an hour, I think. Um, Sharp caps frame rejection on full width half max and brightness and things has actually been working perfectly. Uh, I feel really good about trusting that now. It seems to have been rejecting above 50 to 60 percent or so of all the frames that have came in. It's deemed them not good enough and uh, kind of left them out of the stack. The Eskimo is looking quite good. Unfortunately, the Wi Fi is playing up something rotten right now, and uh, I can't really show you it on the computer screen, but I will put it on screen for you in just a moment at the end of this clip. And, uh, Hopefully you can see there that it is turned out quite well, even on a gusty, uh, really quite bad night. Now I am taking steps to try and sort out the Wi-Fi problem. Uh, I really do want to be able to take you along every single step of the way, as I think it's important in establishing, you know, what's normal in a general astronomy se um, session, because I think there's a problem with trying to show just the highlight reels uh, kind of thing, like only when it goes right, because it doesn't always go right. That'd be uh, untruthful to try and portray astronomy in that way. So I uh, wouldn't want people getting disheartened when their own sessions don't go right, thinking, hey, why does it always go right for him? Because it doesn't. <laughs> um, anyway, the plan now, I think, is I'm going to move away to M51 in Ursa Major. And uh, before I actually go onto that target, I'll probably go to Alioth and uh, use that for focusing with the batting of mask again. Get everything as good as I can and uh, just start a live stack again. Probably those same settings, 450 gain or so, at two second exposures. And really we'll just see how it turns out. I'm not really willing to stress about tonight too much. It's mainly just be uh, a session to have some fun. And that's uh, currently what I'm doing, aside from these Wi-Fi issues. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching so far. Well guys, as you can hopefully see on the laptop here, I hope it doesn't lose connection. It's been really patchy tonight, but 
I've got a, uh, I think this is the third set of live stacked images for M51. I, I did decide to break it up, but not into those shorter um, sub exposures like I'd mentioned. Instead, I've got them going 20 minutes long each one. Um, by like the 20 minute point, these are actually looking fairly promising. I hope you can see uh, just on the screen there the amount of detail that's on show in this. Um, there's certainly, without a doubt, quite a lot of background modeling noise and uh, you know, it could be improved with slightly longer exposures, but I could also maybe make the best of both worlds and use the short exposures where I've got plenty of detail around this car uh, and blend them with some longer exposures if I wanted to take this kind of technique further, which is probably what I would do. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be the third one of these stacking now. I think uh, I'll probably let it take maybe one more, then I'll have about 80 minutes of data and I could actually uh, stack all those up and end up with one decent master file. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was quite interesting to see. This looks pretty damn cool to me, I have to admit. I, I do like this type of uh, imaging and EAA and that kind of thing. And uh, I, I think I'm going to do a lot more of it, to be honest. It, it's good fun and uh, it's not that stressful to kind of uh, just get involved in and get stuck in and make a start straight away. So top marks for it as far as I'm concerned uh, I'm probably just going to leave this running like I say now for a little while maybe pick another target but um, if I do I'll just show you that at the end and I'll probably show you all these other images I've taken throughout the night um, as they were when they came out of the PC uh, and then also when I've done a little bit of processing to them I'm not going to go crazy and spend an hour each on these images processing them or something silly like that as it's not really in the spirit of EAA or uh, indeed this type of uh, photography that I've aimed for tonight so um, yeah I think that's about it for tonight so I'd just like to say if you've enjoyed this then do let me know um, it's been a different type of video to make at least it's been very loose and uh, not very planned and formatted but at least you can see roughly what a night of imaging uh, in this style is like and uh, maybe you enjoyed it I don't really know so uh, yeah if you'd let me know what you thought that'd be great positive or negative i don't mind so um yeah all that said thank you very much indeed for watching as always a huge thank you to all my youtube channel members all the support that you're giving it does help me do some fantastic things now on this channel like uh, i just recently got myself that new microphone i've now got myself this mini pc and there is actually something else in the, <laughs> in the works that's coming soon hopefully and uh, I want to be able to share that with you in a separate video, so I'll keep that under my uh, hat for now. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed, and until next time, clear skies.